Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another Hammer Productions Night. Tonight, I will be reviewing The Nanny, released in 1965. The Nanny stars Betty Davis, William Dix, Wendy Craig, Jill Bennett, James Valares, Pamela Franklin, Jack Watling, and Marie Stenham. The Nanny was directed by Seth Holt. Now this is another one that was written by the great Jimmy Sangster. And uh, this one was based on a novel by the same name, but written by Evelyn Piper. The casting of Betty Davis in this film, um, although a major get for Hammer probably at the time, as, uh, you know, I have to give her credit, she's considered, you know, a big Hollywood legend. Um, but I was never a big fan of Betty Davis as an actress. Uh, back during the day when she was uh, being played as a big romantic um, love interest to all these top male stars, um, I just never saw it. I just never saw her as that character. I didn't find her that attractive. I just didn't see her as what she should be getting parts that some of these more attractive, more believable women in those roles would have been getting. But she did, and she was successful at it, um, much to my uh, <laughs> dislike of her as uh, an actress. Um, but by 1965, when this film was made, her career was a bit... Um, waning, I guess is the best word you could say for it. Um, and Hammer probably, like I said, considered it a big get to get such a legendary actress to play in one of their films. Um, and I have to give uh, Betty Davis credit in this film. Her character of the nanny in this um is a, a really good role, like a really good performance. Um, she really lures you in and makes you uh, feel for the character and get on her side. And it doesn't help that uh, William Dix, this is the little boy, uh, Joey Fan. He's a little shit, and he is portrayed so unlikable that you don't get on his side. You don't see his side of what is going on here in this story. Um, and his parents aren't too much of a help either because, you know, is, is, I like Wendy Craig as an actress, but her character in this of Virginia is... <sighs> annoying. She is constantly, if she is put in a situation like, like she's supposed to go pick up Joey from the uh, hospital or boy's home, whatever he's been staying at all these years, because he was accused of drowning um, their younger daughter, Susie, and uh, he's supposed to be getting help in this uh, special home slash hospital for boys. And um, she is asked by her husband, again, another one that's not really very likable. Um, James Valeres plays Bill the husband as an arrogant, obnoxious asshole. Very snobbish 
as a character. Um, he's trying to get her to go with him to pick up Joey. And she just goes into this fit of going and crying. I can't, Phil. I can't. <laughs> and it's so over the top. It's just so bad um, for the film um, with her performance in that. Um, now, when we get to the hospital slash boys home, whatever it's called, you know. Um, I really like the performance by uh, Maurice Stenham. I've talked about him in previous reviews. Um, I really liked his performance as uh, Dr. Bowmaster. Um, he is always a uh, treasure in any film he plays in, and he was great in the small little role that he has in here. I hate to admit failure, but with young Joey, I'm afraid. He's a monster. Well, don't be uncharitable, Sarah. Our job is to search out their little devils and exorcise them. I'm afraid we've failed Joey, failed him miserably. I really think that they should have focused more on him and had him kind of being an overarching character, detailing us on the goings-on in this story, and I think it would have helped this film go along a little better especially as great an actor as Murray Stenham is. But they didn't. Um, so we are just forced to follow along as the nanny is consistently treated horribly by Joey. And the parents, like I said, do not help matters. I mean, everybody's good in their portrayals, but... <sighs> The portrayals of the characters as they're written um, are a bit annoying. Um, and no discredit to the actors playing the roles, but that's more on Jimmy Sangster's writing in this. Uh, he did write them as annoying characters, and they're played that way. Um, but the two characters that are written really well and I really liked are Jill Bennett's Aunt Pen and Pamela Franklin's Bobby. Um, those two characters are really interesting characters. I really liked the Aunt Pen character. Um, and I, I really like the Bobby character, but the dynamic between her and Joey Joey is a 10-year-old boy, and she is like a 15-year-old girl. And they have so many little sexual, almost, induendos in this film that it just feels creepy, to say the least. Um, one such scene is uh, he sneaks into her room through her window as she's sitting on her bed. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, another one, same thing happens. Only this time, he's got a towel around his waist and he's soaking wet. And he crawls in through her window as she's watching TV. Um, and then she takes him into her father, the doctor's um, office, puts a lab coat on him, and the first thing he says to her in this clip is... Get on the couch, madam. I wish to examine you. Oh, doctor, do you think I ought? Take your clothes off. Really? <laughs> so her reaction was my reaction. Um, <laughs> uh, so... Um, I don't think something like this could be written today. It would just be too, um, too awkward to, you know, it would be just considered just, you know, um, because like I said, she, he's a 10 year old kid and she is a, a 15 year old girl. So, I mean, um, 
the two of them having these little dialogues and weird thing, weird sexual tension between the two of them is just weird. And uh, it is uh, awkward to watch. Um, and uh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to go into any spoilers for the ending to this film because I want people to watch this one. Um, but, like I said, you are definitely lured in to be on the nanny's side. Time for Master Joey's bath. Up you go, Joey. You've got to swear like last night. Swear what? She's got to swear she won't come in the bathroom. I've never heard such nonsense in all my life. Thanks to Betty Davis's excellent performance. And <laughs> you are really against Joey because of William Dick's performance of playing him as such an obnoxious little shit of a kid. I won't come in, Master Joey. Swear. I swear. I think it's humiliating, Nanny. Really, I do. Um, and being such a disrespectful little shit at every chance that he gets. So, um, <clears throat> but um, I'm not going to spoil the ending. Um, I'm just going to end it there. Now, this was the last of Hammer's black and white psychological thrillers that they were doing. Um, now, they did continue doing the psychological thrillers, but they started doing them in color because by this point, Alfred Hitchcock started doing all of his other future films in color. And as good as Betty Davis's performance is, it's just a testament to how good the filmmakers, you know, Seth Holt and uh, the writer, Jimmy Sangster, as a producer as well on this, are that they were able to get this film made even considering um, the backstage drama that happened while they were making this film because <sighs> Betty Davis made everyone's life a living hell on the set of this film. Um, while she was working on the film, she apparently had the flu And she, instead of just, you know, fighting through it and just playing her part and doing her stuff, you know, and uh, everything, she ended up taking other people's glasses and drinking out of them and then literally walking up on in front of someone and then coughing in front of them. I mean, that kind of behavior is just completely unnecessary and uncalled for. Um, and apparently, you know, this is what Jimmy Sangster said um, in an interview, that she made advances toward him and he rejected her. And uh, that might be why she was so belligerent on this set. Um, but I can't, I can't blame... Uh, can't blame Jimmy for uh, uh, rejecting her advances because, like I said, I, I never found her that attractive to begin with, and let alone the older version of her that was 1965. So, but the film itself is a very, very good film, and I it just upsets me that these films like this are not um, more well-known and don't get enough attention. And that's why I'm reviewing them on this channel. So my review of The Nanny from 1965, I will give this film an 8.4 out of 10. It is one of Hammer's best psychological thriller films. And um, it has some really good performances in this. So I would 
highly recommend you see this if you have not already. But if you have seen it, do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in those comments down below. And as usual, if you enjoyed this review, do not forget to smash that like, share, and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos just like this one. And while you're next to that subscribe button, click that join button and become a Dark Knight fan. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this Hammer Productions night, and I hope you will join me tomorrow for another action movie night. Till then, thanks for watching.